The black church, that mysterious but glorious institution that wrapped African Americans in its bosom like a protective mother hen. For African Americans, the church was like a discovery. It was like being in a desert and finding an oasis. When all that we had known about our spirituality was stolen, we found it in the comforting arms of the black church, our mother. For members of the Church of the Living God, that mother was manifested in the form of Mary Magdalena Tate, known affectionately as Mother Tate by her followers. Her beginning was humble. She was born on January 5th, 1871, just six years after slavery was abolished with all the demeaning and demoralizing conditions associated with the era. Mother Tate, however, was a visionary who appeared unhindered by the dual forces of racism and sexism. Like her namesake, she followed her calling, becoming a part of something greater than herself, the Holiness Pentecostal Movement. The Black Holiness Pentecostal Church, called by some folk church, took root in the late 19th century. It was born out of the Methodist tradition. There was enormous growth as a result of the Azusa Street Revival, led by William J. Seymour, who was the catalyst of the worldwide Pentecostal movement. It was under this climate that Mother Tate undertook her calling. Between 1895 and 1902, Mother Tate took revivals across Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Illinois, and other states boldly preaching the gospel. Part of her mission was to heal, convert, and baptize. Mother Tate was of such pure character that she was called Miss Do-Right. This era was called the Do-Right Movement, and her followers were called the Do-Writers. By 1903, she had organized the Do-Writers into the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Her mission was not without opposition. She was beset with many obstacles, and many men wanted to take the church from her. Some men from the Church of God in Christ wanted Mother to set up some churches, and, and they told her, but you couldn't pastor them. And she said, well, if I'm good enough to set them up, I'm good enough to pastor them. And how this woman was so anointed to a lot of men respect what she was doing. Mother Tate was not hindered by these attitudes. She braced herself in the armor of God never straying from her mission despite the harshness of the time. And she found her place in Pentecostalism. Mother Tate's influence strongly permeated the church. She supervised a composition of the Constitution and government and general decree book, which contain the church book rules and bylaws. She also wrote most of the original decree of the church's early literature and some of its music. Mother Tate was an anointed woman, and miracles worked through her. It was said that a lot of times the Mother Tate, the Holy Ghost would fall on her, and whoever the Holy Ghost told her to write to, she would write. And they said her right arm would go to shaking, and she would ask for a pen. And they said she would shake and write this whole letter the whole time, and you would think the letter would be all scribble scrabble, when she would give you the letter who the Holy Ghost told her to write to, it was just as plain as if you took your time and wrote the letter. In 1908, at age 37, she suffered from an illness deemed incurable and life-threatening. They thought she was dying because she was so sick, and it came out to not be a natural death, but a spiritual death, where she was dying in the spirit from cleanness unto holiness. And God then filled her with the Holy Ghost on a bed of affliction there in 1908. And from that time until this present time, we've been in a Pentecostal movement. Soon after that incident, Mother Tate declared herself healed and sealed and baptized of the fire and of the Holy Ghost. When her followers heard her speak in the strange tongue, they thought she'd gone insane. But her triumph over the illness proved otherwise. This event was the initial formation of her church into a Pentecostal denomination. In June 1908, she organized the first great Pentecostal revival in Greenville, Alabama. That same year, her church was incorporated. 
and Mother Tate was appointed bishop and ordained first chief overseer. Her two sons, Felix Earl Lewis and Walter Curtis Lewis, were appointed bishops. The church experienced rapid growth as a result of powerful and spiritually captivating revivals, and by 1916 encompassed 20 states and several foreign countries. It was around this time she married Robert Tate and became mother to his children. One of Mother Tate's stepchildren was Maddie Lou Tate. Knowingly or unknowingly, Maddie Lou was being groomed for her life-defining role as chief overseer of the Church of the Living God. One of Mother Tate's helpers was Bruce L. McLeod, who married Maddie Lou Tate, and they worked together to help Mother Tate grow the church. Bishop McLeod, some people say McLeod, some people say McLeod, his reign was sh real short, about seven years, and Bishop McLeod was one of the bishops on, I guess you would say on staff at the time, and uh, my grandmother said all the time he took a liking to it. <laughs> you know the old folks slang. Right. He took a liking to her, and then they married, you know. She said it wasn't a long courtship. Right. It wasn't a long courtship. Then people started knowing her as Bishop Maddie McLeod, in which they said she's traveled extensively with him in all of his works. In 1924, the church headquarters was established in Nashville, Tennessee, and continued to flourish. But dissension grew along with the church. Mother Tate was aware of the turmoil within the church. According to the yearbook of the Church of the Living God, she expressed her sadness. Because of sin and jealousy, so much trouble will come on the church that I'll be glad that I'm asleep in Christ. On December 28, 1930, Mother Tate died and was buried on a family plot in Dixon, Tennessee. In 1964, her body was relocated to a prominent position in the prestigious Greenwood Cemetery in Nashville, Tennessee. Before the death of Mother Tate, she arranged for the church to be led by three overseers called the Supreme Council, Bruce McLeod, Felix Lewis, and Mary Frances Lewis, who was the widow of Walter Lewis. Mother Tate felt the three represented the Trinity.